soothing, cozy, milky. This like souffle pretty much in a bottle. These are the Milky Musks and we are on a journey to find the best one today. Hi all, we are reviewing my collection of Milky Musks. To be honest, I really wanted to scope down this discussion a little bit because I have probably over a dozen of perfumes that have lactonic notes. But when I talk about milky type of scent, it has a huge span. And I'm just gonna like kind of mention the things that are possible in case you're looking for different kind of milky scents. But I wanna focus on mostly these kind of souffle, throfed milk type of composition that is super uh, skin-like, creamy, soft, but not overly sweet. When we talk about lactonic fragrances, there are so many options that kind of remind us of the same story. Those could be somewhat sugary, powdery almonds. And again, just a quick suggestion there, like one of my favorite ones would be Tardis by Carnera Barcelona. They are the a super sweet vanillin, almost candy vanillin, edible type of sense that you know one example would be adults by Killian they're like more affordable line but again that is very gourmand edible and very very sweet usually there is also like a whole area of condensed milk and there is Matin Colleen by uh, Comptoir South Pacific and like there's so many options there as well but when I was looking for an, a, a, this kind of ethereal right a very soft and cozy nuanced not overly sweet not too woody in terms of the santal which is often kind of has this milky facet to it it was not that easy to find a complementary set to consider so let's start from something that kind of started this whole search for me and a subscriber of mine gifted me a exploratory perfume set by Perle Mois de Parfum. Perle Mois de Parfum is created by Michel uh, Almarac. I hope I'm saying his last name correctly. He is like one of those masters. Dior Fahrenheit, Gucci Rush, Burberry Body. Oh, I'm trying to remember. Um, a lot of Bond 9 perfumes. He is like all over the place. And actually, coincidentally, there are gonna be at least two, to my knowledge, two perfumes here by him that all belong to the same category, which I find to be a curious parallel. So, he opened his own niche brand where he could experiment with the compositions that, with full artistic control. And the brand again is called Perle Mois de Parfum. I know yet another niche brand. I'm sorry, I know we don't need any more of them, but like I, I find when the perfumer himself or herself, when they are open, when they open their own brand, their first creations is what really intrigues me because this, this is this incredible tension between freedom of creativity and the desire to prove oneself and secure a place in, in the market, right? Like to have some form of a commercial success, even if it's a small niche brand. This is where, this is where there's so much pressure running on the, the first releases that any, any of those brands will do. It's almost incredible to see how those unfold. So I have a whole set and one of the perfumes there was called Milky Musk 39. And this is, I'm gonna spoil it for you. Like if you're curious, I can do a review of the range that they have, but let's, let's do a little bit of a spoiler. It's, it's one of the two, my most favorite perfumes from that line. And this is what started this again. I had an extensive exploration of lactonic perfumes probably three years ago and I can't believe that this is not over for me yet, like that something can come in with fairly easy to understand and very easy to wear composition and yet to completely captivate me with, with kind of like the souffle and cozy ease with which he blends very sweet skin-like musks with this touch of vanilla that is not quite edible. 
So it's balancing, constantly balancing between kind of a lotion-y feel and more of a milk froth or maybe even whipped cream kind of feel. It's, I, I, I'm constantly debating, is this musky or is this creamy? Or even like souffle-like, because it kind of, it never goes into an edible or gourmand stage, but it also is definitely not of those like classical white masks that we're used to seeing right now. They are pretty much an abundance of them on the market. And I thought for the perfumes of that nature, right, like pretty much, you know, you know the, the name says it all, Milky Musk, this is what we're talking about today. There you see a very kind of standard combinations. Those perfumes usually to be sweeter, they tend to contain a little bit of either vanilla or marshmallow effect with Santal. And are, they're often very cocoony. They sit very close to the skin, they don't have much of a projection, and often don't really last that long. So this is a really difficult category to formulate that will appeal to white audiences because now, you know, especially in the post-COVID world, like everything has to be even brighter, in, in, last even longer, have so much silage that, you know, that people who lost their ability to smell will still be able to detect some form of chemicals flowing in the air. So this is almost like a rebellion against that. The Milky Musk by Parler Moi de Parfum, I thought, I sprayed it once, didn't think much of it, it's like, yeah, sure, pretty much. It was, to me, it was almost like a Demeter or Demeter, depending on how you print, from which language you try to borrow the pronunciation. You know, like they make all of these, like pina colada smell, you know, the, you know, fireplace smell, this, this, that, ginger ale smell. So I thought of it more like this, I was like, okay, cute. But then I kept applying it over and over and over and over. And at some point I was like, all right, I'm almost through the sample. What am I doing? What am I doing with my life? I looked it up. The price is roughly like, I would say 150. It's not the most expensive, but it's clearly not the cheapest either. Parlem One, the Parfum Milky Musk 39. This is what kind of started this exploration again. And then I started thinking, well, I do have something similar that everybody and their mother at some point reviewed as like the most cutest, longest lasting, lactonic, this kind of whipped cream type of fragrance that's available to, for everyone. And that would be Zadig and Voltaire. This is her, which guess who made this one? Yes, same perfumer. Michelle Almayrac designed this one. The price point for the Deacon Voltaire, this is her, is roughly $50, $60. So much more affordable, but here, in the, in the classic fashion of going from niche perfumery to kind of a designer perfumery, we, everything is a little bit louder, it's a little bit more polished and therefore less deep. This kind of, it's a, it's, it starts with a sweeter with cream narrative, but very quickly turns into lychee musk. And compared to all of the perfumes that we're going to talk about, this is probably the loudest with the most large longevity and the least milky musky out of them all. Because it heavily over overdoses on this kind of like sour fruity musk story and again I thought of it for the longest time is this kind of whipped cream kind of in a in a bottle but once I started comparing it with the same perfumer's creation I realized like oh no 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 this is still not quite that story probably the most affordable option of them all uh, but when it comes to kind of trying to dupe uh, Perle Moi de Parfum Milky Musk with Zadik and Voltaire, this is her, or finding a perfect Milky Musk, this is probably not it, but I can see how it is kind of like a crowd pleaser. Again, if, if something 
that it's such as like a milk throth is too boring for you or too nude this is her will have kind of like the best of both worlds the best of kind of like ex nihila uh lost in paradise last in Par paradise and milky mask from parlemois de parfum so that said not not the top for me and then I started looking and looking and looking and I found another one with almost identical name and this is Molten Brown Milk Musk. Yeah, it's a tongue twister, isn't it? Some, sometimes the names of these perfumes are so similar that it's almost, also almost unbelievable. Like, you, you kind of start thinking, was it intentional or a coincidence? Okay, Milk Musk. My Molten Brown. I found that this being kind of... I don't want to say it's cheaper because the Eau de Parfum version is 180 on their website, but they have Eau de Toilette that is 80, 80 bucks. So my, my version is Eau de Parfum. I don't know how milky is Eau de Toilette, but Milk Musk by Molten Brown will be way more molecular. I feel like there is an overdose of this like typical sour woody notes that you find what is it, Ambroxan maybe? You know what I mean? Like the molecules one to five. There's a lot of that here with an addition of mil milky santal, santal type of presence. So in a way if if I was looking for something with, again, a little bit more of a woody presence, a little bit more of a backbone, a little bit more of a longevity, Molten Brown is not a bad choice. I'm surprised, though, for the price point. It's a bit high. Just my not-so-humble opinion, a bit high for this. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to use up the Parlemois de Parfum Milky Mask. And then I'll use up its sister, which is a little bit more molecular, a little bit more Abraxani, Molten Brown Milk Musk. And then I'm going to transition to the next one that we're going to talk about. I almost forgot about it, even though at the first expedition to find the froth milk fragrance, this was my top choice. And this is Amour Nocturne by L'Artisa Parfumeur. Currently, can be found online for roughly 140, 150. Back in the day, you could buy it for well under 100. I still don't know, maybe there are places you can still find it in the old packaging, not sure. So here, here we're talking art. This is what I call olfactive art. So we're still talking about the same Milky Musk, cozy, souffle, like very, very subtle, sweetness not gourmand not edible by any means like it's literally this milk souffle like this this latte foam essentially that you're smelling but they contrast it with gunpowder to me i'm not really <laughs> i'm not really frequent at shooting ranges to to have like gunpowder smell carved into my memory to me gunpowder smells like kind of peppery like a black pepper in a way so this kind of like dry, somewhat aromatic spice, but not sweet. And together with this milk froth, it creates the most delightful concoction. It's such a beautiful contrast. And yet they live together. They keep, they keep kind of merging and swirling together. Amour Nocturne is pretty much my top one. And this is what stopped me from acquiring a full-size bottle of Milky Musk by uh, Parlem, Parlem Water de Parfum because I find this to be both more interesting in its olfactory design and longer lasting and with a little bit more of a diffusion factor. And it's just so cool. I'm so glad I rediscovered it in my own collection. And if I was to make only one recommendation for you in terms of looking for this souffle, milky, but not too sweet of a fragrance, Amour Nocturne, that's where it's at. That's where it got. That said, there are still a few more options for us to consider. Those would be a little bit more of a deviations. Probably it's impossible to talk about milky Santal fragrances without mentioning Serge Luton's Santal Majuscule. For many, this is super milky and lactonic. To me, this is woody, 
plus kind of sweetened vanilla milk, the kind that you can buy in color commercial grocery stores. This is definitely flavored. To me, this is not nuanced and light enough compared to either Amour Nocturne by L'Artisan Parfumé or uh, Parlez Moi de Parfum Milky Musk. Here, the milk froth, like the, it's, it's done to perfection. In Serge Lutens, Santal Majuscule, it's much more flavored and it's sweeter. It's not nearly as sweet as the vanilla, uh, vanilla milk is in adult by Killian, but it's like well on the way. What makes Santal Majuscule such a cult favorite is that it's not as sweet as on Bois Vanille by the same brand by Serge Lutens. And the woodiness here is very dry and comforting. So for example, in Molten Brown Milk Musk, it's very molecular and almost sour. Like if you've, if you've experienced Abruxan heavy perfumes, you know what I'm talking about. Here, it's much more tasteful take on woody notes uh, on, the, on the Santal Accord in general. So I had to mention it just because if I didn't, somebody would. To me though, it's a departure. It's a departure toward more woody and sweeter, edible vanilla milk type of story. And the other one that I think is definitely worth mentioning, because it's kind of on par in terms of the unusual juxtaposition of notes, will be Fat Electrician by Etat Libre de Ranch. Here, we experience this beautiful, soft, milky musk but that's kind of like hiding beneath a very like metallic mesh with with sharp vetiver it's really bizarre but it's also very beautiful so here gown powder and milk froth here we have this milk souffle with metallic vetiver I would say I would be hard pressed to choose between the two. For me, a more nocturne, just I like the packaging a little bit more. I'm a big fan of L'Artisan Parfumeur. It's just, I'm biased, I'm biased in this case. But in terms of the kind of the surprise factor, the interesting contrast in the unusual composition that still has Milky Musk in its heart, I would say they're on par. And this is where I am with the ranking, with the buying and purchasing decision. I was very tempted to buy Parlez Moi de Parfum Milky Musk because it's just such a cleanly and per like perfectly done, executed idea. Simple idea, very fitting name, beautifully executed olfactory design. And yet, when I started wearing it, I enjoyed it a lot. I really enjoyed wearing it a lot. That said, I first of all want you just to put the brand for you on the map because as I said, this is the Milky Mask is my in top top two, but the top one, mm, I don't want to spoil it yet. I don't know, should I, should I? So this brand has a fragrance that just stole my heart. I'm like, oh, I need you in my life. And this is the one that I was considering buying just as well. But when I pulled all of this together, I realized that probably still, Still, these two is where I want to be when it comes to the milk froth and like the milk souffle. And another important point that I wanted to bring to your attention, like a lot of people do compare these online, the same perfumer, right? Just a, a different price point. This is his own niche brand. This is what he did for commercial brand. This is her by Zadig and Voltaire is much, much less milky than the comments online would suggest, especially when you pair them against each other. Then the vast chasm between these two becomes rather obvious. In isolation, yes, Adik and Voltaire, this is her, is quite milky and lactonic, but it's much, much sweeter. And the kind of fruity, sour white masks here are much more dominant than all of the other compositions that we reviewed today. That said, I want to know where do you lie on this spectrum? First of all, do you like the idea of a milky fragrance as a like a personalized fragrance experience? If you do, do you want it to be like sweeter, like more edible? Do you want it to be 
woodier and here we have Maltel Brown Milk Mask as an option and Serge Dautin Santal Majuscule. Do you want it to be just perfectly smooth and cuddly? Again, this one, Milky Mask 39. Or, more like me, it's not enough and you need some form of a twist. And this is where I pretty much like, all right, I actually got everything I need in my collection already. I'm kind of curious to see where you fall on this spectrum. I would love to hear your recommendation about like the perfect Milky Mask perfume that's out then on the market. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.